What's up guys, coming at you with another one. This one's on symbolism. We went around for a day in our vicinity and saw what type of cool symbols we could find, went back to the crib, researched it, and then put it together into what you're about to see now. So check it out. This is one of the most iconic symbols in the West, but the cross is found throughout the ancient world and predates Christianity. Its use can be traced all the way back to Babylon. It's ironic how a pagan symbol became the trademark of Christianity. But not early followers. They used images like the anchor, trident, and ship to represent the new way. It wasn't until the 5th century that the cross was popularized by certain Christian groups. The six-pointed star, or hexagram, widely associated with Judaism as the Star of David. Like the cross, it's actually an ancient symbol, and it wasn't until 1897 when the first Zionist Congress adopted it that it became synonymous with Jewish culture. The six-pointed star is also seen throughout the occult. Here's the Celtic cross. It originates in Ireland and Britain, first appearing in the 9th century. It's possibly combined with the pagan sun cross, which would have appealed to older traditions of that region. Here is the Dharma Chakra, a Buddhist symbol. It's the eight spoke wheel of transformation. Like other symbols, there's multiple meanings. The spokes can represent virtues of the Buddha, or the wheel itself representing spiritual advancement. We're pushing on and I'm noticing there's symbols everywhere. This Volvo emblem, you may recognize part of it as being the masculine symbol for Mars, but it's actually the ancient symbol for iron. This was intentional, it was a play on Sweden's exceptional iron industry. This symbol is used to represent strength, durability, and safety. At least that's what they wanted to convey. Corporate logos are funny. They could almost be ingrained in one's subconscious. This is a long-used trademark of the mobile oil company. It's a symbol from Greek mythology. This immortal creature was tamed by a goddess and assisted the ancient poets. It symbolizes imagination, speed, and power. We're sliding over to the art museum. This place just blows my mind. I know that we'll find some really cool symbols here, so let's explore. Those wishing to conceal a message sometimes use symbols as a language. The owl could be regarded as the master of secrets. This observant creature flies under the cloak of darkness and stockpiles information. From the US government to the arts, the owl can be seen everywhere. Like the street layout as seen in Washington DC. To rituals of the super elite recorded by those who have snuck in. To even the corner of your dollar bill. Look closely. I stumbled upon this cool website regarding the owl, richardcasaro.com. He covers the history of this symbol, uh, the groups that have used it, and even some famous figures associated with said groups. And but five minutes inside the museum, surprise, another owl. What is it with this owl and supposed super elite and the artists that depict it? We move on to the next room and find this curator explaining the tiger in this Chinese tapestry. This is a good example on how a symbol doesn't have to be an emblem. It can be something like an animal in general. To these Chinese, the tiger represented a type of expression of divinity. I enjoy reading the placards. The explanations of the symbols and such is what brings the art alive to me. That's actually something I didn't do in this room. We're looking at these Art Nouveau posters from the turn of the century 1900s. And I'm wondering if these artists had a particular fancy for the bird or if this collector cherry picked them. That's something symbolism seems to do. Strike in succession. I guess the repeat button could be a powerful tool. Speaking of tools, what's this 17th century parliamentarian have in his hand? Apparently it's called 
the baton of authority. This is interesting. So now we see an example of a status symbol. Over here we're noticing another pattern. It's medieval man babies. Yeah, apparently that was a thing. Most of the babies we see here are depictions of baby Jesus and the view at that time was that Jesus was fully mature from the start. Here we have roses, a common attribute of the Virgin Mary, and the sphere in the hand of baby Jesus, representing the world in which he came to save. I call this painting Bad LSD Trip. If you know about ergotism, that is the disease caused by eating moldy bread which results in hallucinations, you can see how the artist expressed the hermit's hellish experience. This painting reminds me that our dreams and trance experiences can be filled with symbolism. Figures like Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud made careers out of study and such. Here's Saint Jerome in his study. I often see these skulls associated with wise men and mystics of the Renaissance. On an esoteric level, it is said that the skull represents the death of the ego. Here's a painting from the Dutch Golden Age. It's a portrait of Judith van Wolvergen and apparently she comes from a banking family and I'm wondering what's the significance of this object in her hand. After a little digging online, I find similar portraits revealing what is to be a fan. And that just leads me to more questions. What's the significance of these fans? Here's a symbol we've probably all seen, may not realize, to some group elevator company. The arch with the multiple spheres represent the multiple entities they've acquired over the years. They put an emphasis on this thing of multi. And we're checking out of the museum. Local philanthropists made it free to the public on Fridays and Saturdays. Thank you. And we're headed right across the street to the historic cemetery, Woodlawn Cemetery, founded by Henry Flagler. 1904, another big name. Palm Beach has always been an affluent area, and I'm just wondering what type of stories lie unlocked here. This is in fact a historic site, and at one point it became a tourist attraction in what I call the pre-Disney era. And we're just happy to be here today in these historic grounds, studying these interesting symbols. Here we have the grave of a mason, who apparently was a part of the Order of the Eastern Star as seen by this inverted pentagram used by the order. I think I understand the square and compass, the compass representing the spiritual plane and the square representing the material. Symbolically, it's supposed to represent a special type of union between the two. But this symbol here, uh, I, don't, I can't say I've seen this before. Well, maybe. Using a little detective work, I identified the winged sun disc. Seems like the Egyptian and Greek mystery schools seem to be of importance to the American who's who. And as we continue, we notice this beautiful dedication with several symbols on the exterior. One thing I've come to know about losing people is it's impossible to describe to someone who hasn't met them who they were. It's like each life has a unique fingerprint. We may not be able to find the right words but maybe we could find something deeper to put together to represent the idea that we are a continuation of them. And looking at the symbols here, we have the scales of justice indicating this person may have been involved with law. The scales are supposed to represent a principle of fairness in the judicial system. And we have the heart, a symbol used to represent spiritual music could also indicate Irish ancestry. I'm not sure if that's the case here. Does anybody know what the letters N and B would represent on opposing columns? Here's another beautiful mausoleum. And right in the front we have a vase. This is probably just a place to put flowers. But it could also represent symbolically something else. That esoteric idea that the feminine aspect of God offers enlightenment. And this distinctive badge on this headstone caught my eye. It reads, The Woodman of the World. I looked it up and found it to be a fraternal order from the early 1900s based out of Omaha, Nebraska. 
They still operate and it's one of the largest privately held insurance companies offering those benefits to its members. Here's another Masonic headstone, this time with the pentagram, what I call right side up. So I wonder what the symbolic difference would be there between the uh, inverted one and the right side up one. I asked my brother-in-law who was well versed with symbols and he pointed me to the direction of the 1460 War of the Roses. I found on symboldictionary.net here a uh, correlation between the pentagram and the rose and it was also interesting to find that there wasn't really any evil connotation associated with an inverted pentagram until the mid 20th century when it was uh, that symbol was adopted by Satanism and all that so and down here we have a little saucer perhaps it's a flame dish I'm not sure we could find this symbol called the eternal flame at some of these noteworthy grave sites such as JFK Martin Luther King Jr. and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Esoterically, this symbol can be explained by what's known as the Flame of Prometheus. Here's another family mausoleum of one of our local leaders. What a peaceful place to come to rest. And not too far away, we have another Woodman of the World carving, ornately done up. Let's clear off this man's American Legion plaque. Represent this beautiful Saturday. And here's another one that caught my eye. It's uh, three chain links. I looked it up and it's the Independent Order of the Odd Fellows. This fraternal order dates back to early 17th century London. These supposed philanthropists are 600,000 strong in some 30 countries worldwide. And I'm wondering, what are these people about? What distinguishes them from, let's say, the Masons? It's cool how these symbols are having me research things that I wouldn't have otherwise done so. I think I heard about the Odd Fellows before, but... You know, when you think about a cemetery, you might just think of it as a place of peace to remember those who passed. But as I'm discovering the use of all this symbology and history associated with it, I'm realizing this world is a place of the living. We're all so blessed to be a part of it. Sometimes I just wonder, what are we doing? And check out this mystery. Does anybody know what this is? It's a tin full of some sort of produce with pennies on top. I've been searching and couldn't find any leads. And we're just stopping for a little refreshments here before we conclude our last leg of the journey. We're going to take it to some historic neighborhoods where the symbolism is rich. Here's some pretty common symbolic decor. Pineapples. Here in the South, pineapples have become the symbol for hospitality, friendship, and they're known as the universal party fruit. Taken from southernliving.com, the use of it as decor goes back to a legend of New England captains, sea captains coming back from the Caribbean. When they would get in the harbor, they would unload their ship and return to their house where they would spear a pineapple on a fence post. This would let their friends know that they had returned safe from their voyage and the pineapple was an invitation for them to come and visit. This might be purely decorative, but I kind of like it. See the rose there on the right? And a fleur de lis on the left? We got some sort of shield here, dead center. Might have to get up there on a ladder and really check it out next time. <laughs> then we got a straight out coat of arms here. <laughs> and another coat of arms. I'm wondering who's the noblest in the neighborhood. Perhaps a joust to settle the question is in order. You can't forget about the lions. Reminds me about what I learned in that Rosicrucian video. And here's the chiro, one of the earliest Christian symbols. This is at the Greek Orthodox Church here, and this symbol was used by Emperor Constantine to conquer Rome. And just for good measure, here is the Rod of Asclepius. Asclepius was the Greek god for medicine and healing, not to be confused with the Caduceus. Somehow, apparently, we got that mixed up over time. There you go. Hope you like it. We're doing this one video at a time. I'm going to 
keep pumping them at you. I don't know what it'll be next. Might just put a damn Dion Fortune book and stop motion claymation. Expand on my Play the organ at Bethesda by the Sea. GoPro off the front of a boogie board down Tamarind. You may not know what any of that is, but keep rocking with me and I promise you, we're gonna get them good. But until then, stay quarantined up. Everybody be safe. I got stuff to do. Over and out.